Well, let's hope for the best. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 upcoming movies that might suck in 2019. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Just to clarify up front, we're not saying these movies are guaranteed to suck. We'd actually love nothing more than for them to be pleasant surprises. Given the source material, premise, and people involved, though, we're kind of having a difficult time getting excited. Number 10. Charlie's Angels In recent years, Columbia Pictures has become known for digging up nostalgic properties in the hope of attracting a new generation of fans. For every Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, though, there's a Total Recall, Robocop, or Ghostbusters. The new Charlie's Angels, starring Kristen Stewart, Naomi Scott, and Ella Belinska, seems like another shameless attempt to milk a profit from an established brand name. Whether you grew up with the 70s TV series or the early 2000s movies, nobody was begging for this reboot, and director Elizabeth Banks will need to bring something really unique to the table to generate interest. At least after 2011's short-lived TV reboot, there is seemingly nowhere to go but up. This is going to be long, hard, and rough. Number 9. Dark Phoenix from Bryan Singer's original film, to Deadpool, to Logan, the X-Men franchise has been responsible for some of the best superhero movies ever. At the same time, the series has been anything but consistent, with disappointments like X-Men Apocalypse, X-Men Origins Wolverine, and X-Men The Last Stand. You came here looking for permission. Gene. Dark Phoenix is essentially supposed to be an apology for the later film, which botched one of the most celebrated story arcs from the comics. Granted, we're not sure how this film could possibly be worse than the third X-Men movie, which was so poorly received that it was eradicated from the continuity. Given Fox's shaky track record and multiple release delays, however, we can't help but be skeptical. They're right to fear me. I've seen evil. And I'm looking at it now. Number 8. Shaft the original Shaft trilogy was made at the height of the black exploitation craze, but that's largely part of its charm. Gonna need some more brothers. With guns this time. Since these movies were a product of their time, we're not sure why Hollywood decided to resurrect the franchise in the year 2000. What's even stranger is that we're getting another sequel almost two decades later. Was anyone aside from the Fresh Prince asking for this? The sequel sees the return of Richard Roundtree as John Shaft and Samuel L. Jackson as his nephew, while Jesse Usher debuts as a third-generation Shaft. The fact that director Tim Story previously made the first two Fantastic Four and Ride Along movies doesn't exactly bode well. Tell me it's something good. Tell me it ain't one of your dick around. Number 7. Grudge In many respects, the Grudge series has mirrored the Ring movies. Both started off as Japanese horror flicks that inspired successful American remakes. <laughs> It wasn't long until these remakes got the sequel treatment, but the later installments didn't perform nearly as well as their predecessors. Paramount tried to breathe new life into the Ring franchise in 2017, but critics and audiences were generally left underwhelmed. Will this 2019 reboot of The Grudge suffer the same fate? Only time will tell, but if this film actually manages to sink lower than the direct-to-video The Grudge 3, Kayako isn't the only one who will be left holding a grudge. Number 6. Sonic the Hedgehog Sonic's no stranger to cinema, having made a cameo in Wreck-It Ralph. If you leave your game, stay safe, stay alert, and whatever you do, don't die. He's also starred in a 1996 anime that was later rebranded as a movie. And Jaleel White reprised the Blue Blur's voice in a 2013 fan film. Still, a $125 million movie centered on Sonic doesn't seem like the wisest investment, especially since his latest games haven't really hit bullseyes. Chunkage contained. We could potentially see this working if the filmmakers draw inspiration from the Sonic Sat AM show. Given the comedic talent involved, however, we're expecting something closer to Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Also, Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. I want you two to go help Breezy eliminate Sonic. That's probably the weirdest video game movie casting choice since Dennis Hopper played King Koopa. I'll kill that plumber! Number 5. Alita Battle Angel We could see this adaptation of Yukito Kishiro's manga going either way. On one hand, the film was directed by Robert Rodriguez and producer James Cameron co-wrote the screenplay. When I found you, your very human brain was miraculously intact. The 
cast is also quite impressive, with names like Christoph Waltz, Jennifer Connelly, and Mahershala Ali. On the other hand, yikes, what big eyes you have! The main character's design is an acquired taste to say the least. Some find it visually intriguing, while others are just creeped out by the uncanny valley effect. I'll have to face them head on. The mixed reception might explain why Alita Battle Angel was originally supposed to come out in July 2018, but has since been pushed back multiple times. I'm with her. Number 4. A Medea Family Funeral Talk about beating a dead horse. The Medea movies are a cinematic infestation that's not going away anytime soon. It doesn't matter how much critics pan these films or how many Razzies Tyler Perry wins for playing the titular mad black woman. What the hell problem with you, Hattie? Uh -uh. Oh, no. I don't see nothing. I'm not gonna fall for that. Based on the box office returns, there's obviously an audience out there for these movies, meaning we can count on a new entry every year or so. That being said, there's little doubt that a Medea family funeral will have longtime fans laughing all the way to the graveyard. Suck it up and shut the hell up. Others, meanwhile, are likely keeping their fingers crossed that this is the final nail in the coffin. Oh my lord! What are we gonna do? Number three, The Angry Birds Movie 2. Despite becoming a financial hit, The Angry Birds Movie was primarily viewed as a blatant cash grab deprived of humor or charm. Mm, 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 oh, that's good stuff. Mm, anybody want to eat some cake off their dad or husband? Of course, it's not like we were expecting much from a movie based on a smartphone game with little story or well-defined characters that, quite frankly, peaked in popularity years ago. Something isn't kosher with these pigs, and it's up to us to figure it out. Alas, it's all about the almighty dollar, meaning a sequel is crashing into theaters this year. What's more, the film has caged up a flock of voice talent to squander, including Rachel Bloom, Sterling K. Brown, and Leslie Jones. While we'd like to think the newcomers will liven up the material, we're already smelling a bad egg. No! <laughs> Number 2. Ugly Dolls there appears to be a mentality in Hollywood that if something exists, it needs a feature film adaptation. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that we'll soon be living in a world with an ugly dolls movie. Based on a line of hideously adorable plush dolls, this project has been in the works since 2011, eventually finding a home at STX Films. To be fair, if the Lego movie proved anything, it's that films based on toys have the potential to be infinitely better than expected. Then again, if the Emoji Movie proved anything, it's that some feature-length commercials deliver exactly what we expected. For the first time in my life, meh is all I feel. We can only hope Ugly Dolls won't follow in the latter's footsteps. What happened to looking out for number one? Being number one doesn't matter if there aren't any other numbers. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable, or depending how they turn out, dishonorable mentions. Scanning. Identify yourself. Sarah Connell. Number 1. Dora the Explorer With each new announcement regarding this film, it just sounds more and more bizarre. Come on, vamanos. Everybody, let's go! For starters, it's a live-action version of an educational cartoon that ran on Nick Jr. Second, Dora's not a little girl in this interpretation, but a teenager played by Isabella Monaire from Transformers The Last Night. Speaking of Transformers, Michael Bay's production company was reported to be tied to the project at one point, although this has since been debunked. Even so, Dora the Explorer has never exactly screamed cinematic. Backpack, 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 backpack. Honestly, if director James Bobbin somehow manages to pull this off, it might be the biggest shock in cinematic history. In any case, we'll always have college humor's interpretation. It's Swiper, okay? He's working with the Iranians now. And now you need an explorer. Too bad. You know I'm out of the game. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.